Um, if, you, if you Google microaggressions on something like Twitter, a word that will often come up is exhausted. People say that they feel exhausted by uh, microaggressions because they have trained themselves into this way of thinking. And uh, I mean, an example I I tend to give of of it is is if we were to ima imagine a black and a white customer entering a shop at the same time, and a white uh, server whose job is to go and offer them help. Um, which one should she approach first? If she approached the white customer first, obviously they'd then read this situation as uh, white supremacy, the white person came first. But if she approached the black person first, then this situation could be read as um, anti-blackness and not trusting a black person to um, peruse the, the shelves unsupervised. So we're always going to see racism in everything if we're trained to look for it. And I think there's a very British solution to the white black customer in the shop problem, which is for the server to ignore them both and give them no customer service <laughs> whatsoever. Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective here. That was a portion of an interview with Helen Pluckrose. She is co-author of a book called Cynical Theories, How Activist Scholarship Made Everything About Race, Gender, and Identity and why this harms everybody. And that interview was done on a show called Trigonometry. And uh, I will leave a link to that interview if you'd like to watch the whole thing. I will say viewer discretion advised because that show uh, can have some strong language. You will hear that a little bit on that interview. So just be warned about that. These, by the way, are not Christians talking about the subject here, but what they're talking about there on that show, that episode, really speaks into something that Jason Whitaker and I are going to talk about this week. We're going to be talking about cancel culture, and what she's talking about there is critical theories, theories like critical race theory, which has played into cancel culture and, and has actually given rise to a lot of the sentiments that we see today in our society where people are being judged as being racist, even though they themselves don't have prejudices of people of a different color but a lot of things in our society are being affected right now by these kinds of philosophies. So we even see businesses that are firing people for certain views that they hold to. Uh, we see institutions that are trying to train people in certain philosophies, certain ways of thinking, and to see themselves as maybe having a certain level of guilt just because of their own privilege in this in society and Helen Pluckrose is really criticizing that and you can really see in that interview uh, a lot of how she thinks through this what's fascinating again is she's not really a Christian she's not coming at it from a Christian standpoint and yet she sees the danger of that type of thinking and how it's pervading culture more and more so Jason and I will talk a little bit about that discussion. We will also launch into our own discussion and look at some other evidence and articles too. But this is a really important topic. It's important for us as Christians, but really society at large too is talking about it. So we'll look at that more in the discussion that Jason and I have. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. If you'd like to share any of your thoughts in the comments, I'd like to hear them. Thank you so much for taking a little time to listen to some of my thoughts from a fresh perspective. <laughs>